believe only three uh, for the first paper. So Andrea, you are 0 to 0.33. Uh, Zinpei, uh, you are 33 to 0.666. And Xinjiang, you are 666 to 1. So here comes F9. Xinjiang. So we get some lucky students. <laughs>
the limits understanding in terms of return on investment. Uh, okay, uh, here uh, here's some brief introduction of the visualization tools used in the uh, in this paper. The first visualization tool is parallel coordinates. Uh, this this visualization method is developed is developed for determining multivariate data that to identify relationships among variables. Visualization uh, parallel coordinates in this paper is used for session analysis uh, re regarding to a, partic a particular session. The second visualization to provide it in this paper is called Star Field Display. It is a general purpose visualization tool that tightly couples its scatter plot with facilities for looming filtering and dynamic clearing. Okay, so these are the two basic visualization tools that will be used in this paper. Here is the uh, general four steps for um, for uh, for analysis of the uh, of the effectiveness of uh, Store. The first step is data collection and then analysis and then based on the analysis results, uh, recommendations are provided and the, the last action and the last step is make taking uh, action. However, this paper focuses only on the second step, analysis. Okay, uh, here are the um, basic uh, basic knowledge about the web merchandising and analysis. Um, in order to uh, analyze the effectiveness of uh, web merchandising, um, the users of it are always uh, analyze <coughs> the effectiveness of the online merchandising from two perspectives. First is marketing and the second is merchandising. Marketing is defined as the activities used to acquire customers to online stores and retain them. Merchandising is defined as the activities involved in acquiring particular products and making them available. So uh, you see the difference, um, yes, um, they are um, similar ideas. However, the only difference uh, from my understanding is that marketing focuses on acquiring the customers, however, merchandising focuses on acquiring a particular products. It's, it's not really about acquiring products, right? It's mm -hmm. about selling those products, right? So, uh, yeah, to the well, you have to decide, that, you, know, you have to decide what you sell, obviously. Uh, because if you decide to sell a product that nobody wants to buy, <laughs> then no matter what you do, right, nobody will buy it. But uh, basically, product assortment is only the first step. So you see, all the other ones, it's not really about acquiring products, it's about how you sell them. Uh, right, right. And so you mean, if an uh, online store sells So this paper focuses on only focuses on merchandising. 
that is how to sell the particular products uh, to, the, to the customers and to analyze the effectiveness of the online store. Basically, uh, merchandising can be analyzed uh, through these four Your 
alternates located in the up left side of your online store is the best seller or not. Okay, next I'm gonna introduce some uh, some ways that are proposed in this paper. Before I introduce the ways, I like to describe the basic shopping steps mm, when you do an online when you do the online shopping. Product impression, click through basket placement and purchase. First. Product, product impression means you see the advertisement. Click through means you see the advertisement hyperlink and then click it. Third, ask placement means when you click into the store uh, and and uh, see your products in interest and uh, paste them into your online basket. The final step is to complete the, the entire purchase process. Purchase. So these three are, are shown here. Look to click free, click to basket rate, basket to buy rate and the, the final rate look to buy rate is from the first step to the last step. The next slide is more straightforward to understand those those four ways. Look to click rate means when you see this uh, product and uh, click it. It's the relationship between the first and the second step. Click to basket rate means how much. How many, how many visitors place the particular product to their shopping basket when they see them? That is between the, the second and the third step, click through to basket placement. Similarly, basket to buy rate is between the third and the fourth step, which means when you place the product in your online basket, you you pay for it, finalize the payment and purchase it. And the last way, look to buy rate. Businesses care about the conversion rate, right? So, if the, you the significance is that to uh, to to subdivide the co conversion rates into smaller steps. But in what form? Okay. Uh, can you give some examples? Uh, 
first of all, before we go there, so these are ratios, right? So as numbers, uh, what are they? In what range are they? Yeah, as, as the numbers. From zero to one, right? Or hundred. Okay. So if it's better to think about as the numbers, percentage is just convenient. You, know? you don't want. So the numbers between zero and one. Okay. So the conversion rate is the product of three micro conversion rates, right? So what can you tell me about the conversion rate as a number compared to the micro conversion? So if you take them as numbers, what can you tell me about the conversion rate? If, uh, if the conversion rate is very high and one of the micro conversion rates is quite low compared to the conversion rate, it means... Can it happen? Yes, sometimes I think. It means there are some problem in, in this step. For example, the basket survival... Slow down. You have a product of three numbers. Each one of those three numbers is between a zero and one. What can you tell me about the product as compared to each one of these three numbers? Well, you have three micro conversion rates on the left hand side. Yes. Uh, the conversion rate. No, that's fine, but as numbers, as numbers, as numbers, what's the relationship between the conversion rate and the micro-conversion rates? Yes, Jamie? The conversion rate has to be the lowest because they're all less than one, so when you multiply them together, they get smaller. Isn't it obvious to you that the conversion rate is less than or equal to any of the micro-conversion rates? Because each of the micro-conversion rates is between zero and one. If you multiply any number by a number which is between 0 and 1, the product will be less than or equal than that number. Do you understand that? Sorry, I see that. Yeah. You have a number which you multiply by another number. And that other number is between 0 and 1. Right. So the product will be a number which get less than or equal than the number that you multiply. Right. So you have here three numbers, which are between 0 and 1. Mm -hmm. When you multiply them out, you'll get the smaller number. Yes. The only case when uh, conversion rate equals to one of the micro-conversion rates oh. is when? Is when the other two numbers are one. Exactly one. Okay? No, if you multiply anything by zero, the product is zero. Okay. Look, I mean, guys, when you read this, this is not even college level. I mean, this is a grammar school level consideration, right? So don't lose your common sense. Just think about <laughs> what, what, what is going on here. Okay. So your conversion rate, which you are interested in, you know that it's usually less than either one of those numbers. Okay? So the significance of decomposing a conversion rate into micro-conversion rates, because micro-conversion rates tell you what? So when you, you look at conversion rate, you say, okay, I advertise so many people saw my ad. Why the hell only 2% of them decided to buy? Okay, so this is the question that you're going to ask. So by looking at the conversion rate, you cannot really offer any answers. You cannot venture a guess. You don't know. When you calculate micro-conversion rates, then which one you would have to focus on first? You look at the three micro-conversion rates. So which one would you focus on first? The 
the smallest because Well, because this is where you lose the most. Yes, yes. Those are the ratios. They tell you how much you lose at each one of those steps. Okay, this is where you lose the most. Okay? Now, look at all those three. So, for example, your look-to-click rate is low. So, what does it tell you? So the other two are actually pretty good, but look to click is very low. What does it tell you? Uh, perhaps it's mis uh, misleading information on the no. hyperlink. No. Following link? Hmm? Bottleneck. I mean, bottleneck. Well, uh, bottlenecks, yes. Obviously, the smallest one is always <laughs> the bottleneck, but why? So what, if, your, if your bottleneck is look to click, so what does it tell you? Maybe it's not uh, impressive. What is not impressive? Okay. If the other two are actually good. Okay. Andreas. Uh, I was thinking that the other two are high, but the first time is good. Yeah. And then the second time is good. Yeah, but it's slow. Yeah, you can try to promote it more, but it's slow. So but what you wanted to say is what? Uh, I want to say. means you have a lousy ad, that the ad that you are showing doesn't catch anybody's attention, because if you do manage to catch the attention, then it flows through. But when you are showing the ad, not many people are interested. It means the problem is with the 